Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be another trying to fix it video. Another video where I've bought various different faulty equipment from eBay and I try to take it apart and do my best to fix it. Now, like I keep stressing in these videos, I am not an expert at this whatsoever. I just like taking things apart and trying to fix them. I may be doing it wrong and I might not have the correct tools for the job, but still, I will do my best to try and get these things working. So only watch this for entertainment. It's not a how-to video and there might be much better ways of fixing things. This is just the way that I go about doing it. And sometimes I think people find it interesting because maybe I have the same sort of thought process as themselves. Because I'm not an expert at it, I've got to start with some simple things and I might make some very stupid mistakes, but that is all part of the fun of the learning. Now, I don't actually know what's in here because I've ordered that much up recently off eBay for this new series of videos that I've sort of lost track where I am. I think I know what this one is because it looks like it's four individual boxes, but these two things I'm not too sure. But what I have been ordering up is stuff that's not always related to gaming because I don't want to be just kind of just doing one different type of things with this series of videos. Really, I'd like to be able to try and fix absolutely anything. So let's open it up and see what we've got. So I'm going to start with this one here because I think I know what this one is. And then after I've opened them, I'll uh, show you the price that I paid. Yep, that's what I thought it was. Right, okay, so with this one here, I've ordered up four broken little drones. Okay, so these sort of like micro drones. Now, I think it said that they were returns or something, so I presume... You know, these are from a, uh, a company or whatever, maybe online company, and customers send them back saying they're not working. Good thing about that is if these haven't been properly tested, often customers can make really simple mistakes, like sometimes not putting in the batteries the right way. So I know that's going to be pretty rare, but uh, it can still happen. So uh, I'm hoping between four of them I might get a working one. Right, okay, so that's that one there. Now let me open up this one here. And what I will say is this video is gonna be really long because obviously I'm trying to fix three lots of things. But at the end of the unpacking, I will put the timestamps in and also in the description, I will put the timestamps. So you can go straight to the bit you like. So if you're only interested in this, then you can just watch that. You're not forced to watch everything because for example, you might not be interested in every single thing I do. Uh, right, okay, let's see if I can open up this fella. Okay, I know what this one is. Now this is a weird one, but I'm actually quite looking forward to doing this one here. In a second, let's just see what that is there. Right, okay. Now, this is interesting. I bought this as a faulty wind-up toy made out of tin. And uh, after, oh, it's got a big dent there, isn't it? Yeah, it's had a bit of a bash in there. After I uh, got the listing, I did a bit more research into it. And basically, I believe it's a Russian toy, and it's from the 1960s. Now, I can't remember as a kid if I had any wind-up toys or not, but I quite like the fact that there's no batteries in here. There's a little key that you wind up. I'm being honest with you, I don't even know where you wind this thing up. I was here, so you wind it up here, and then I presume you do this or something to maybe get it working. But I thought it might be interesting to take the bottom off this and have a look inside to see how a wind-up toy works. Chances of me fixing it is going to be pretty slim because I know nothing about them. But still, it will be good to see how it works. I presume by winding it up, you're sort of storing energy and then it must go through certain cogs to release the energy or something. Not too sure. But still, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to that. Now, let's see what's in this uh, big one here very light I have actually got a clue now what this one is because it's so light da -da -da -da. here we go a Cyberman mask from Doctor Who 
Now, obviously this is a weird one, but apparently it's supposed to light up and it's supposed to also change your voice. And apparently it's not working. Again, I don't know if it is gonna be fixable. Again, I know nothing about this. I've never seen this or taken one of these apart before. Not even sure how it's, oh, well, there you go. You've got buttons at the side here. I presume you've got to put batteries in somewhere. There. So uh, yeah, that's three different things. I presume that these are gonna take the longest to fix because there's four of them. But uh, yeah, hopefully between all three of them, it will be quite interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my little laptop. I'm gonna show you the price that I paid for each of them on eBay. And then I'm gonna put the timestamps so you know which one to go to if you're only interested in this, for example. So the Cyberman mask, this one was up for $7.99, but I put an offer in at £5, and you can see here that uh, the offer was accepted. So it cost me £5 plus £3.99, so four back, so basically £8.99 for that one, so £9. And it says here in the description that uh, item overall is in very good condition. There are a few scratches and marks. Unfortunately, I cannot get the sound or lights working. Looks to be a common fault, sold as spares. So that's that one there. Now let me get to that drone one. Right, so with the drones there, you can see job lot, four times micro drone, spares or repairs, returns. Uh, it says here that uh, all have one fault or another, may not be tested. So hopefully they haven't been tested too much. Now it's £18 plus £3 delivery, so they cost £21 for all of them. But these are not expensive items anyway. I think you can get them for 10 or £15, so they're not, uh, they're not massively expensive. Now it's uh, very uh, vague, it just says four times micro drones for spares or repair, all come boxed. So that was it, £21 for all of them. Now let me show you the little tin toy. Okay, so this one was up for $19.99 and $3.19 postage, but I put an offer in at $15.99 because, uh, I mean, I don't know how much these things are worth. I see other people selling them for like £40, £50, £60, up to £100, but obviously this is not working. It says, uh, well, sorry, let me say, show you what I paid for it. So if you have a look up here, it says here that he accepted your offer of $15.99. So uh, altogether I paid £16.99. Uh, £19.18, so quite a lot of money. It says here, vintage tin plate toy uh, in not working condition. And I think it said that it looks like it's been, uh, it looks like it's been overwhelmed at one point in time, but I'm no expert. This can be taken off to fix it if you are clever, and that way inclined, well, I'm at that way inclined, but I'm not clever. It says, there are no maker's name, key is present. There is a minor dent to one side. Oh, that's fair enough, because there is a dent. Uh, open to reasonable offers as it's not working, hence the reason that I did the offer. So, uh, yeah, it was actually very expensive, that one. But still, I thought it might be an interesting one for the video. So now, let's start. I'm not too sure what to start with. I'm looking forward to doing all of these. I think, you know, I think I'm going to start with the Cyberman helmet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the timestamps so you can have a look and decide exactly which one you want to see. Okay, so here is a Cyberman mask. So uh, I've looked at other listings and I believe that the mouth is supposed to light up blue and it's supposed to have a voice changer as well and it does look like there's a little microphone here. So I think first things first, what I'm gonna do is just have a look in the battery compartment and see what's what. Now, obviously you can tell by my accent that I'm from the UK. So I don't actually know, a lot of my viewers are from America and I know you do have Doctor Who over there because I know it's, uh, you know, I, I know it because of the Netflix, but uh, I'm not sure if Doctor Who's big over there because in the, the UK, Doctor Who is pretty massive. And uh, when I was young, like uh, most people were into Doctor Who, but then it kind of stopped for, a f I think it stopped for quite a few years. And then I think it all kicked off again in the early 2000s. And uh, it looks like the budgets were better because when I was young, the, uh, the monsters and stuff were quite, uh, that was part of the novelty because they kind of look so fake, but now they, uh, I think the budget's bigger because it all looks pretty good. So I don't know, if uh, if it's kind of big in America, would you just pop it down in the comments? Because that's one thing I don't know. Is it just a UK thing or is it actually big in other parts of the world? Right, okay, so this takes double A batteries. So let me get, looks like I need three of them. Let me get some of them. Okay, so I found some batteries. I'm actually getting low. And when you're doing your testing, the worst thing to do is have batteries that you're unsure about. So what I've done is I've just put them across a the multimeter here just to make sure there is voltage on all of them. Uh, they're all showing like 1.46, etc. voltage. So uh, that's going to be fine. Right, let's pop that one in there. 
And I don't know if there's an on and off switch or anything, or do you just press it here? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Try me. There's a little switch here. Can you see? It says, uh, try me, one, two, and three. So obviously these are the different things. Got nothing there. Oh. Hear that noise? I wonder if that's for the microphone. Oh, there we go. I thought I'd seen some lights light up for a second. There we go. Oh. I wonder if that's for the uh, voice changer. Hello, hello, hello. Testing. Right, okay. Well, that smells a bit in there. Right, okay. Uh, let's try the next one. Well, it's certainly coming on for a, a second or two. But yet when I tap it, it's not coming on. Oh yes it is, now look, hold on. Maybe that's the voice changer. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Oh, one second, I've got a delivery, one minute. A load more junk arriving. <laughs> right, sorry about that. Okay, so, which one was it now? Well, that looks... I'm going to put it on and see if that is the voice changer, the middle button there. I'm going to loosen this right off. Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com. Yeah, that is working. Okay, so the voice changer's working. And I presume when you speak in it, because when I tap it, can you see it lights up? So, that one does nothing. That one does nothing. So that's on at number three there. Don't quite know what try me's for. Oh, here we go. It's come to life now. Right, okay, that's the try me one. Let's go to number one again. that one. That's not doing anything. And that's not doing anything. Oh yes it is. Didn't really get that. It's a bit hit and miss though. There we go. Let's try this one again. So is, this must be the voice changer in the middle. Hold on. Testing, 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 testing. Well, okay, so that one appears to be working. So what's number two then? To me, that is now working okay. So that was a bit of a strange one. I think the buttons just haven't been pressed down in a long time. It just take, took a little bit of while to, uh, I don't know, like seat themselves or something. I'm not too sure. But uh, let's turn it off and on again and then uh, see. So on try me and now go straight to number three. Got that one. The voice changer. Yeah, and this one. Okay, so that wasn't really uh, that wasn't really a fix. It just needs to be. How do you shut this up? Right. Uh, yeah, it's all. I don't need to take that apart because it's working just fine as it is. I think it just needed a few presses on the buttons to get them working a bit. Maybe there was a bit of dust or debris in there. Maybe it hadn't been used in a while, and. Uh, I don't know, it just appears to be working fine. When I first of all put the batteries in, it didn't do anything, but just by doing the switch a few times, it's then freed itself up. So, it all appears to be good now. Um, 
yeah, that's working fine, so there's no need to take that part at all. So, uh, is that a result or not? Well, yes and no. I mean, yes it is if you want a working Cyberman mask, but uh, I would have quite liked to take it apart to see how it was working and stuff. But you know what? It's going to be pretty simple, isn't it? I think what's going to happen is you uh, undo the screws here. It will separate in two parts. From the battery pack here, there's going to be wires traveling down, I presume down here, into this section here. And then from here, you're going to have the wires probably on this little section here going into here for the microphone. And uh, the speakers are coming. Well, there's lights there as well, so they're going to travel down there. Not too sure where the speakers are located. But, uh, yeah, it's pointless taking apart if it's working because it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to fix something. If I take it apart, there's only a chance it's going to break. So, uh, yeah, OK, let's, uh, let's move on to another one. Right, so we're going to do the tin toy now from Russia from the 1960s. Well, I believe that's what it is anyway, looking at the other listings. So for this now, I'm not going to need my multimeter, am I? Because it's all mechanical. So this is kind of nice because with mechanical stuff, which you don't really get nowadays so much, you can physically see what's happening. So it kind of makes it more interesting. You can fully understand how something's working just by looking at it. While with electronic devices, obviously it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't know what's going on inside the chips and everything. But uh, yeah, with this one, I'm quite looking forward to doing this one. Now, I will apologize if there's any collectors and stuff out there because obviously I do not know what I'm doing and there's a very good chance I'm going to make this much worse than it is now uh, well I mean it's broken now so it doesn't work but you know what I mean it might be an easy fix so you might be screaming at the screen saying don't do that don't do that but obviously I don't know what I'm doing here so uh, right, let me see. Uh, so yeah apologies for that right so I'm just going to wind it up a bit Okay, so it's letting me wind it, and it feels strong when I'm winding it, but uh, it's not happening. I wonder, could it be as simple as this dent here? I wonder, is it blocking up? Because obviously, I presume both trains are supposed to whiz round. Right, okay, I'm going to take this apart. I hope now it doesn't kind of, because it's under tension, like psh, fly out in my face. So it looks like there's these little green tabs here that I just have to lift up, and then I'm hoping this will just pop out. I'm just going to give it a little helping hand to begin with with a screwdriver and then I can straighten it up with my pliers. Now I'm going to try to do as little damage as possible because although I'm not really into these there are going to be people out there that are into them and as well as that it's kind of nice seeing what toys looked like years ago because uh, the amount of thought that would have gone into something like this. I know obviously this could just be a copy of uh, other, other things because I've seen, for example, like a bus station version of this and everything. There's probably loads of different versions of, of this. But, you know, the people that thought of these things to begin with, it's pretty amazing. And I think I can speak for my kids when I don't think they've got any... They might have the odd sort of McDonald's wind-up toy, but I def, they definitely haven't got any tin plate toys. When I was young, I think I might have had some sort of tin plate car. But, uh, yeah, everything's just plastic nowadays. Ah, right, here we go. But I just don't want it to fly out in my face. I presume it's not going to, but, you know, if there was a loose part. So I'm just going to face it over that way just in case anything was to fly, oh, to fly out. Right, okay. Actually, looking at that mechanism there, that does ring a bell. So I think I have seen something like this before when I was younger. Just trying to get that back into shape a little bit. It bends so easy because it's just tin. Right, okay, so let's have a look here. This is our little catch here. So you can see what's happening here. This just keeps it under tension. So. This must be in the off position there, so this is off over this side, and then to release it you do that, and then these should start spinning. See, this is what I like, you can tell straight away, even though I've never seen this toy before. So, these start spinning here, and can you see it then goes into here? I can't even remember what these are called, is it rack and pinion or something? I really haven't got a clue, but you see, when that spins, it's just going into the hole, so it's uh, really simply made. Now... Let's try to get that little dent out of it a bit, just with my thumb. 
because you know it's dented up here, isn't it? But I don't think that would stop it from that wouldn't stop it from spinning. Ah, listen, listen, listen. Ah ha 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 ha. Maybe it did stop it from spinning because look, it's wanting to go now. I think it's wanting to go. Yeah. Right, let's try to bend that a bit more. Here we go, here we go. Just loosening up a bit. Yeah. Right, let's give it a wind up and see. Uh, maybe it was the, the, the bang here was having this, uh, was putting this under uh, friction basically, just like the brake. So you've got the brake here. So let's uh, wind this up. And it looks like, you see when I'm winding here, this thing looks like it's the thing that stores the energy. Apologise for all my terminology. Obviously, I don't know about these things. So, you know, some collector would call this a certain gear and this something else. But if you have a look here, when I'm winding this up, this is like a spring, isn't it? And then I'm uh, I'm winding it, so it's making it under tension. In fact, you can see if you look in there closely. Oh, there you go. Right. Okay. I can't do it anymore now. So that's wound up fully. So now, when I do this, is it going to go or not? Right. Let's give it a little helping hand. Oh, sorry, I had it off the uh, brake. No, it's still not going, but it, it kind of nearly wants to go. Oh, I'm going to cut myself. You can, you can hear that it's, it's almost wanting to fire up, isn't it? Still getting caught it's not smooth so I think I'm gonna have to have a look look up the top here and see why why is it not smooth what's what's getting caught is it this side again I mean in a way you have to feel sorry for the kids don't you because uh, how bored are you gonna get off this just watching it go round a few times I think I would have rather a tennis ball or something. Right, I think because it all looks okay in there, doesn't it? The, the gears themselves, unless I'm missing something, don't look particularly... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Hold on a minute. Can you see here? This cog here is in the holes, yeah? But this side, it's not in the holes. Can you see it's missing them? So let's... No, it keeps going out, it's not going in. There you go, now it's in the hole. But then it goes it goes out just as easy. Probably because this side might be a bit wobbly. I think we need to I think what we need to do here is I think we just need to make sure everything lines up properly and then I reckon it will work. Might need to put a bit of WD forty on it. Not sure if that's going to cause any damage or not, but everything in here looks okay. You can see how simple it is. Now it's wanting to go. Let's try and wind up one more time. Right, so I've got the brake on at the moment, you see here. Right, it doesn't take much winding at all. Come on, you can do it. Oh, no. Definitely get in there. Doesn't look like you get that much out of it. It's getting stuck every time I go over here, so I need to find out why it's getting stuck. It's getting stuck in that position all the time, isn't it? So, uh, I need to work out why is it getting stuck over here. There, and again, watch, just as it goes into the tunnel. There we went, we did it that time. Oh, it's definitely getting better. Actually, it goes a surprisingly, uh, it goes around quite a few times. No, now it's, now it's done. Now it's still going.
Yeah, it just keeps popping out. It keeps popping out up here. But remember, I'm forcing it around rather than this. This should be doing the forcing, not me. Right, I'm going to wind it up and have a look at it from the bottom. See, I could be wrong, maybe it's this that's stopping it, but I get the feeling it's something here that's creating friction and it's not going round. Like I think it's bent I think this is bent out of place. Because this side here feels nice and loose, while this side isn't, and I think that's what's causing the causing the problems. There we go. So it's the dent here that is definitely causing the problem. That's really going for it now. And I'll put pressure here. So, I mean, it should have been kind of obvious, but it was the dent that was causing the friction to stop these going round. That is amazing how long it goes. I presume a bit of grease would be best in there, not not WD-40. But you know, I haven't. I've got grease in, in my dad's shed, but I haven't got grease. I haven't personally got any grease here. Right. Okay. Now let's see what it's like. Now, put the brake on. All right. Let's watch it go round. There's still friction here because it slows down every time it goes there. But to be fair, that kind of makes it a bit more interesting. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bend it all back into place now and uh, make it work, make it work properly. You can see where it's been wearing away here. If you have a look there now, you can see the metal bits on the actual underneath circle that's spinning. Really I could do with a little rubber mallet just to try to flatten that bit out. But again I'd need some sort of block of wood underneath it because otherwise I'm just going to dent it in. And uh, I haven't really, I'm not set up for that at this house. I haven't really got any workshop or anything. Well, I'm going to take off this little house here, or this little train station, whatever it's supposed to be, and then I might have more luck in straightening it up. See, in a way, I don't want to do too much to it because, let's say, for somebody that collects these things, I think they'd probably rather one that had honest damage rather than one with loads of like hammer marks and everything on it and the paint chipped off. I think they'd rather see one that, oh yeah, look, it's been dropped. Just like if I was going to buy a car, I'd rather see like a, an honest scratch on it rather than a real bodge drop of it, be, uh, bodge drop of it being repaired. You know, I'm not going to be able to take out the house without undoing them there. I don't particularly want to get involved with that wheel. Yeah, okay. Uh, see, it's got two more things underneath here, and I'd have to then take apart. I'd have to take it all apart, and realistically. When I go to put it back together, I'm probably going to end up bending something out of place. It's definitely freed up now. You can feel, well not feel, you can't feel, but you can see when I'm wobbling it how loose it is compared to this one here. You know, they're both, sorry, they're both loose now, but compared to what it was before. Right. 
Right, so it's still getting caught there. Okay. Yeah, that one there, I wonder, can you see there, that's sticking up a little bit? If I was to flatten that down, maybe it's snagging on that a bit. Because when this got a whack down, it might have made that one pop out a little bit. It's working pretty good now. these back down there. I mean it's definitely still bent compared to that one. If you look at that it goes up nice and straight while this one is a bit like the leaning tower of Pisa so it's still bent out. But that's because the base here is bent. There's a crease here and I know from cars that when there's a crease you can't just pop it out again. No that's not going to go out. I think that's probably going to be as good as it gets. Well, considering there's no grease or anything in it, it's, uh, I would say, it's nearly working perfectly. Well, really, it is working perfectly, isn't it? It's not stuttering around here anymore now. Right, let's pop the back back on it and we'll give it a full wind up and we'll see we'll see it whiz around now I didn't actually make a note of which way round this goes but I presume it makes no difference I wonder what was the purpose of doing all the little the bits on here was it to grip on the floor or is it to give it extra strength maybe Kind of like braille. Right, okay. I'm going to try to bend them all fully down. Right, so that was actually a lot simpler on the inside than I thought it would be. And seeing that mechanism at the, in the middle really brings back memories, but I don't know what from. I'm sure I had cars, or do you know what it might be? Do you remember those friction cars that you used to get, where you just pushed, so you didn't even have to wind them back? You just put, or do you know what? Maybe it was wind back cars, because I used to have them where you used to wind them back, and then they used to click, and then they would go off. Or even the friction toys, where you just used to push them along, and then the friction used to pull them along. It, it looks to be a similar mechanism. Right, okay, so that's the bottom on again. Right, let's give it a, a final wind up. Right, that's it, fully wound up. Now let's take the camera down so you can see it in all its glory. Okay, so do you know what? I really enjoyed doing that, and uh, again, really a nice easy fix. It was just the fact that it got dented in on this side here, and it was just creating friction on that sort of circular 
thing that spins around at the bottom there. It was just creating friction between the actual casing and the circular thing, and it was stopping it from spinning around. So very easy fix, and you can see a toy like that realistically should, you know, that should last forever because uh, you can just see how simple it is. Right, okay, so that's that one there, and also I'm impressed with how long it lasts as well. But again, you know, I'm kind of grateful for being brought up when I was brought up rather than being brought up in this era because, uh, you know, the novelty, although it is a very nice little piece, the novelty would wear off very soon. But still, nice for this video. Right, let's move on to those drones. So now we're going to try and get these little drones or these quadcopters, I think they should be known as, working. Now I've had a look at this item number down here because they've all got the same item number. And this is actually an item number from Argos, which is a, a UK shop that basically is like a catalogue shop that sells absolutely everything. So the good thing about Argos is if you buy something and you don't like it, it's kind of easy to take it back. So maybe with some of these, they've been bought for like a child or something and then they're not really happy because it only lasts three or four minutes before the battery wears out which I think is normal on these in which case then they might have just taken it back to Argos because they're unhappy with it rather than them being faulty as such but worrying thing is that although these originated from Argos obviously they're being sold by an eBay seller so they could have been cherry picked again all the good ones could have been taken off and then sold as second hand working and then uh, you know they might be just getting rid of ones that are unfixable but hopefully that's not the case here maybe the seller gets them in from Argos and just gets rid of them quickly but who knows slightly worrying they've all got these faulty stickers on but uh, on most of them they've been peeled off you can see here I can't see what the fault is but it says that it was purchased on the 17th of the second 16 and it was returned on the 21st of the second 16 on this one here the sticker has been peeled off on purpose on here it's been peeled off on purpose on this one I can't actually see any sticker on so uh, maybe that's the giveaway maybe on these faults it all says the same thing like for example not binding with the controller and if it's not binding with the controller, realistically, is there anything that I'm going to be able to do with it? Probably not. But still, let's take them all out of the packaging and see what's wrong with them. I think we're doing one by one. And they're certainly complete. Anyway, they've definitely got everything in them. I presume that's a sticker and instruction manual so uh, that's a good sign right no batteries in here right let's take triple a batteries and let's see what's in here i believe they're supposed to come with spare blades when they're new and they do so that's all a good sign Right, okay, so this is how you charge it up, it's just via a USB, and then that plugs into this bit here. Yeah, and it only allows you to go one way. So that all looks relatively relatively normal. Let me get some batteries in here, and let me see if there is any actual power, power in this at all. It's a shame it can't be charged up from the controller, because some of them you just plug into the actual controller here, and then it, then it will work. That all feels normal. This one on the left is supposed to do that because this will be for the throttle. Now, I'm uh, not an expert on quadcopters. I've never had a uh, quadcopter, but uh, I have had little radio control helicopters, just to, again, the small ones. And I'm a bit out of practice now, but I could fly them. So I'm going to stand more of a chance of flying these if I can get them working than uh, someone else. This would be just to trim it to uh, get it to hover nicely. So, for example, if it was leaning to the right or the left, you should be able to trim this but hopefully we'll get one working so we can work out what's going on just gonna spin each of the, the blades I can see that this one here is definitely bent here so obviously this has had a crash so if you have a look here can you see on the propeller there's a slight kind of white mark here so this one is definitely uh, definitely bent so that might be it it might have had a crash that stopped it from working all of these are also numbered so this is a four and this is like B seven a2 and B6 so obviously each propeller must be numbered for a reason 
you must be only able to replace the propeller on each corner like maybe both red ones are different from each other it says they're B3 and A4 so A must be for one side and B must be for the other side I mean, it would be nice if somebody took off their uh, uh, propellers and just put them back on the wrong ones because that would be a very easy fix well let me get some batteries for this that's good lights coming on right okay uh, on and off right this is already on so obviously this is uh, completely flat now so I'm going to have to plug this one in and then I'll open up some of the others. Let's turn it off. There's a little switch at the bottom here. Let me plug this one in and get it charging. All right, I've got a little USB charger here. Plug that in there. I've seen a little light light up there for a second. All right, there's nothing to say that that's charging. When I plug it in there I can see a little light come on just for a second but then it doesn't do anything. I presume the light's supposed to come on when it's charging. Now, actually the very fact that this is not working is a good thing because that says to me that at least this one here hasn't been tested because otherwise there'd be a little bit of charge left on here. So uh, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to open up another one because they're probably all going to need charging or there's a chance, isn't there, that this cable here could be faulty and that's the reason it's not charging. So right now it doesn't appear to be charging, but I haven't actually read the instructions. Let me see. Maybe the light only comes on when it's charged. Uh, or it might be because it's been discharged for so long that uh, you need to leave it plugged in for ages. Or it could be possible that it's because it's discharged for so long the battery might now be faulty. Let's just have a look, see what it says. Right, it says here, look, connect the USB charge cable to the quadcop to charge in terminals. Then connect the USB charge cable to a computer USB or other USB power supply like a smartphone charger. The LED light built into the USB socket will turn on while charging and turn off when charging is complete. So right now, according to that, charging is complete. But we know it's not because there's absolutely nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing happening there. So let me leave that plugged in for a while. I'm just going to turn that off. Let me open up some of these other ones. It is also possible that maybe the battery is going to be damaged on all of these. Oh, here we go. Excellent. Right. There's definitely light life in that one there. So again, that one comes with. Uh, oh, interest! Oh no, that one does come with the. That one comes with the cable as well. Just quickly, I'm going to swap this cable over just for this one, just to see if it's going to then accept the charge. No, but yet if I was to plug it into this one, which looks like it has got life in it, there you go. See the red lights come up there. If you can actually see that or not. There you go. So, this one could be a faulty battery. Let me just test the lead because now I can test the lead on here. And if this lead's also working, yet yeah, the red lights come on there as well. So I know the leads are okay. So it might be as simple as a faulty battery in here, which uh, may or may not be a good thing. I don't know if you can get replacement ones. Right, okay, so we're going to stick with that lead for the time being. It looks like we've got spare blades in this one. So this is good, at least we've got different faults on them. But we've only got two blades in here, so it looks like this one has been played with a bit more. Some of the, the, the blades have obviously been replaced. First of all, let's just see if these are all spinning. Right, that blade there is broken. You can see that that's bent downwards. Yeah, they're all spinning anyway. Again, there's a chip out of this blade here, so this one's definitely been played with. Right, let's turn it on and see what happens. All the LEDs are on. 
Excellent, it's binded straight away. Okay, but there's no strength there to lift them up. Also, I can see that this motor's wobbling. If you have a look there, that's wobbling a lot. Mind you, they all wobble. Let's, let's twist them all a bit. Maybe they're designed to wobble, so when they break, when they hit something, they don't do anything. Right, well that might be just... I mean, it definitely binds and stuff, but there's nothing, there's nothing there. Just hold that up. Okay, batteries have gone. And maybe when they're flashing like that, when they're all flashing, it means the batteries are low. So I'm going to charge this one up, and uh, maybe that might be, might be a working one. So let me get another charger for this. Yeah, that light's on nice and strong there. Actually, that's much stronger than this lead here. Let me plug in this one. Yeah, that's really weak compared to this one here, isn't it? So, let's plug that one into here. No, no red light at all. Okay, it's just, just strange because when I plug that one in, that one barely lights up at all. But when I plug in this one, it's really bright. Well, let's start, let that one charge up for a while. Let's open up another one. Keep that one plugged in. Okay, there's nothing when I turn that one on. Appears to be okay. Right, let's try plugging this one into here. The light's very weak again on this one. Very weak. Right, okay. Yeah, I wonder if they're battery faults. What I'm going to quickly do is, well, I'll unpack the last one, and then I just want to double-check all the controllers are working with this one known working one here. Yeah, that's good. We've got some lights. Promising. Okay. Whoa. Right, so it keeps uh, tipping forward. So that says to me that the white motors are working better than the red. Let me see, maybe this is what the trim's for. No. I wonder whether, before I do any damage to this, I wonder whether I should double check to see which propellers go where, just in case they've been mixed up, because it says B here, and it says A here, and here it says A and B. Oh no, A and A. A, A, and this is A and B. Let me actually read the instructions and see, see how these should actually be, because it could be as simple as that. It could be that the propellers have been put on wrong. Right, well, so this is interesting. It says here that uh, the Q4 propellers are not identical. Each prop is labelled with an A or B and sometimes also a number which can be ignored. When replacing props, make sure you install them in the correct location shown below. There is also an A or B printed onto the quadcopter body close to the corresponding motor. The quad will not fly or flip over if the props are not installed in their correct location. The colour of the prop is not so important, only the letter. So if you have a look here, see the charging things at the back, it's got to be A there and B there, B and A. So already we know now that the props are wrong here. So let's take them all off and just start uh, start again. It also says, can you see here, B? I don't know if you're picking that up or not. There you go, B. And if you have a look on this one, it will say A. Up here, A, and this one is B. So let's pop them all off 
and start again. And I think I'm going to put some nice uh, new propellers on as well. In a really bad crash, whoever was playing it might have just thrown the propellers back on without taking notice of the number or the, uh, the letter on there. Right, so this one says A, so let's put this one at the front on this side. So this one should be B. Yeah, B. This one says B on here. Put it there. And this one says A. Which is here. Well, let's try that now. Ah, that's better. Right, okay. Oh, nice. Ooh. I've got it the wrong way round, haven't I? It's that way round. It's going to take me a bit of getting used to this. I believe there's also different modes. That's getting it now, isn't it? That's quite a nice little thing. Well, I think I'll leave the practice until later. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with that. Right, OK, so that appears to be working. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to uh, see if the other controllers are syncing up and then at least we know whether the controllers are working or not. So again, turn it on here and turn it on here. Perfect. Let's just try the sensitivity thing. Yeah, I don't really get that. Definitely must be doing something wrong on that. It's definitely when you go over to the right, isn't it? Look at that. It tells you just to push it in, but it's when you hold it to the right. Okay, so that appears to be working. Let's try this one. At least I know how to change the sensitivity now. So that's working. Oh, our batteries have died. Right, okay. Okay. Let me just take the batteries out of this, put it into here just to test the controller, see if there's enough just to make it sync up. Yeah, so all the controllers appear to be okay, so I now need to charge this one up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, charge them all up for a bit and then come back to it because right now some of them are definitely flat and I don't know if that's a fault because of the battery or whether they just haven't been charged up in months or possibly years. So I'm going to come back to this a bit later. So now while I'm waiting for it to charge, I'm just going to go through the instructions fully. So I'm going to read it from front to back so hopefully now I will have more knowledge of it and work out the faults and stuff and work out what it's supposed to do. Okay, so all the charging lights have now gone off on the uh, little things here. Some of them are, are very faint, some of them are really bright, but uh, not quite sure why that is. Anyway, I'm going to unplug each of them now and I'm just going to make sure that they're all coming on. And then I'm going to check the propellers on each of them because now I know that that was, that was the fault on one of them, then it's quite possible that the same fault is on others as well so I'm just going to quickly check see if they're each lighting up ok 
Okay, so that's lighting up. That one's lighting up. That one's lighting up. And this one, I noticed when I plugged it in before, can you see what's wrong with this one? There's no battery in it. So if you have a look here, I don't know how I didn't notice that before, but look, there's no battery. So of course this one isn't going to charge up. So somebody's been a bit sneaky and they've taken the battery out of this one. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to uh, pop one of the other batteries into it just to see if it works. And if it does, then I haven't looked yet, but I presume you can probably get replacement batteries for these. So uh, let's just pop this battery in here. Just moving the little clips away from the circuit board. This is it's really clever how they did this. They've made the circuit board the actual body of the quadcopter itself, which is really good because obviously you're going to save on body weight then as well. So uh, I've never seen that before, but that's a really clever design. Not that I know much about these, so uh, maybe it's quite common in the quadcopter world or the micro uh, quadcopter world, but I thought that was a really nice little design. You can see that the board is the actual body. They're very good. Right, okay, let's see if I can uh, take this one off. There we go. And I'll pop it into here. And if it works, then I know that the fault is the battery. Yeah, there you go. Right, okay, so I might be able to get one of these batteries here because you can see I've got the information on it, 3.7 volts. Looks like it's uh, 100 milliamp hours, so I should be able to get the info from there and have a look on eBay, see if you can get replacements. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look now and we're going to see if they're all lined up properly. So this says B and this says B. A on the propeller and A on the board. A and A, B and B, so that is correct. Right, let's see this one here. So it says B here. This says A, so that's definitely incorrect. This says A and B, so that's incorrect. And A and A is correct. And A and B, so that's incorrect. So on this one here, quite a few of them are incorrect. So now, to keep it all standard, I think what I'm going to do is take that one off as well. I'm going to have it so all the white propellers are at the back and then the red ones are at the front. I think this was the one I did earlier. Make sure this is correct. B, B, A, 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 and B. So that's correct. So now let's check this one out. B, B, correct. A, A, that's correct. B on A, so that's incorrect. And B on B, so that is correct. But I'm going to swap them to have the, uh, the reds at the back. I'm just going to take them all off there. So this could be a nice easy fix. It might be what happened was, like I said earlier, it got into a crash. Whoever it was, two or three propellers came off and they just put them back on and they just put them on in any order or they might have just gone red, red, white, white, but the wrong way round. So we're going to have the whites at the back. So I'll right, well, leave that one out because I've got to check out the battery on that. All right, so let's turn them each on. So with these, the best way to do it is turn this one on first because with any radio control equipment, you're supposed to turn the transmitter on first so you're in control. So I'm going to turn that one on and then I'm going to turn this one on because if you were to turn that one on first, in theory, it could start flying off before you've turned this one on. So turn this one on. Then here. There. And this one on. And here. Excellent. Right, OK. There we go. Well. Right, OK, so that's definitely flying. So I'll have to practice with that one now. Okay, that one's definitely flying, and now this one. Okay, so that's not spinning. No, okay, so 
Let's turn these ones off because we know that they're working, but can you see here that top right motor is not working? So let's turn all these off. So again, you're supposed to turn this one off first, then the transmitter. Off and then the transmitter. Right, so those two are good. That one's missing a battery, and this one is it's got a problem with. this motor here. Right, so let's feel it. Let's see if it's got two wires going to it. Mm, no, it hasn't, has it? No, there you go. So if you have a look here, can you see that there's a red wire here? There you go. That wire there is not attached to here. So I'm going to have to pop this motor out and put this red wire through this little hole. or have a look how the others are fed. I'm not sure if it's been chopped off if this long enough or not. Maybe I'll have to spin it round completely. So uh, I need to get that onto that little red plus there. And hopefully this one will be working. And then I just have to find out whether you can get a battery for that one. Right, so uh, let's turn this one off. And let's take this apart here. I wonder whether I can just ease that red wire out. There we go. Right, okay, so I don't have to actually, I mean, it should just be a case of pinching those things and pushing out, but there's only kind of one part of the circuit board here which has a bit of give in it, that little slot there. So, uh, it seems a bit fiddly. Right, okay, but I don't actually need to do that anyway because now all I've got to do is strip back a bit of that red wire and just solder it onto there, so I should be... I should be good to go. So I think we'll do that because these look like they spin around a little bit anyway. Right, okay. I'm just going to use my uh, thumb to strip it back a bit, you can see now. So I'm just going to put tin that with a tiny bit of solder and then just put that onto the positive there and hopefully then it might be all working. Right, okay, I suppose just to be safe, I'm just going to take the battery out of this one. Because those uh, LiPo batteries can be a bit dodgy when it comes to heat. Right, let's get our soldering iron out. Now, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm going to pump in these details into eBay and see how much they cost or if they're available at all. Okay, so I've been researching the battery. It's this one here, and I have found it, but I can't believe how expensive it is. So if you have a look here, let me just zoom in. You can see it's this one here. You see it's Hubson, and that is the name on the actual box as well, if you look there. And this particular one, they're wanting £4.37 plus £6 postage, which is a big no-no. And even this one here, it's a buy it now, but it's £9.50. So it's really expensive. Now, that is because I'm looking at this name here. These might well be generic batteries. They Maybe they fit loads of different of these uh, micro quadcopters, in which case then you might be able to pick them up for two or three pound. But from initial searching, they do seem to be expensive. So am I going to get one? Well, no, it's not worth me getting one because remember I paid 18 pound for all of these plus a few pound postage. So I can't remember what it was, 21 pound or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this for spare. So unless I can find this, uh, on a different part of eBay for maybe two or three pounds, then I'm just going to keep this for spares because now I've got spare motors, spare little body, spare propellers, and also I've got the circuit board as well, as well as the transmitter. So I've got all these to fix up these as and when they break because I'm going to have one, my son will have one, and my daughter will have one. And then when we're all flying in together, there's going to be accidents, things are going to break controllers are going to get dropped and at least then I've got one spare lot that I know works because I've put the battery in it and it works uh, then I've got that as a spare for when things go wrong on that particular one right let's get on with soldering this one here okay so I'm just going to tin the wire and then we're going to heat up the ball of solder that's already there I'm just going to place the wire onto it 
And I'm going to try using my fingers. If it gets too hot, I'm going to use the long nose pliers. So I'm just holding it under the old ball of solder just to melt it. There we go, it's going now. No, not quite, hold on. There we go. I'm just going to hold the wire into that and then just uh, hopefully that will be it. Let it cool for a couple of seconds. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I think that will do. It's in there anyway. Right, let's pop the uh, propeller on. Put the battery back in. Hopefully this will be working. The battery just has a little bit of a sticky pad on the back. So I'm not sure how evenly these are placed. I suppose if I get this a little bit out, then I'll have to trim this one up more than the others. I don't know whether uh, you know it makes a difference whether it was a millimetre this way or a millimetre that way. Probably does. Right there we go. We're in. Right, let's turn this uh, turn this one on. Let's see if it's working now. Oh, is that the one I was working on? No, that's a different one. That's a little bit delayed. That one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one I did, and it's perfect. But this one seems a bit seems a bit wobbly. Let me try to spin it round a bit. That might be better. They all seem a bit wobbly. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right, I think what I'm going to have to do is do a bit of practicing and then I'll come back to the video when hopefully I can uh, fly it for more than two seconds. Right, okay, so as you can see there, that was a nice easy fix that one because it was just a broken wire and obviously when it comes to a motor, you're gonna have to have positive and negative to make it work and the positive wasn't on there. This one didn't work because there's no battery in it and that's still not going to work. As well as that, the, uh, the blades on most of them were mixed up. So I think the main fault with these was that uh, the blades were mixed up, in which case then they weren't flying properly and then people wrong, wrong the customers wrongly assumed that it was, uh, you know, something had gone wrong with it, then what actually happened was they put the blades on the wrong way. So, with this one, fine, broken wire, we know about this one. This one's got no battery in it, uh, but again, that's not the reason of the fault. The fault was probably that uh, the blades were wrong or something like that, and then whoever got these before me obviously took the battery out of that one, unless the customer took the battery out and did a sneaky one and brought it back to Argos. And again, with these two here, the blades, remember originally the blades were wrong. So on uh, on pretty much, I think all three of them, apart from the one without the battery, had wrong blades. So what an easy fix that is. So now, I mean, get a bit of practice on these now and then I'll show you them flying. And uh, yeah, that will be it. Right, okay, so I've been practicing a little bit, but uh, it's very hard. I can actually fly a helicopter okay, but I've gone a bit rusty with it. But these I find even harder again. But uh, you know, it's just gonna take a bit of getting used to. But if you have a look now, just turning it. I to keep it low to the ground so then when it crashes, it, it won't be such a, uh, a big drop. But there you go, you can see it's hovering now for more than a couple of seconds. Oh. 
apologies because it's just me filming here on my own so I can't actually follow it around the room and I'm not skillful enough to skillful enough to keep it in one place. But there you go, there, there you go, you see now, that's not so bad. And uh, the other two work just fine as well. There you go, I'm doing all right now. Half of the battle for me is just trying to keep it in the same spot, but that's how you get better, by just doing little tiny movements. And for the size of it, oh, they're amazing, really, for the size of it. But to me, it hasn't got the same amount of control as it does on a, a helicopter, but I have got it on the lowest setting, the, the, the least sensitive setting, uh, because obviously I'm not good enough yet. But for example, if I go left and right, you can see it's moving like that. But when you have it more, when you have the sensitivity higher, then uh, it will be uh, it, it will be a lot more twitchy. So you'll be a lot able to do a lot more movements. I believe you could do flips on this as well. Okay, let me just quickly show you the other two. this one up a little bit better. Yeah, I definitely need to trim this one more. Let's see, see if I can do it. That's right, so it's going forward. That's better. Right, and do the last one. So you can see lots more practice is needed, but uh, I'm slowly getting there. Right, okay, conclusion time. Okay, so that is it for today. You can see that three different things unusual items and yet still a lot of fun to fix. This one here was enjoyable, really nothing wrong with it at all, just needed to press the buttons in and out a few times. This one here, I had a lot of fun doing this one here, again not a huge amount wrong with it, swapped the blades over and just had to solder one off the wire, so nice and easy. If I want to get that one fixed I just have to buy a battery, but I'm going to use that one as spares, but still that's going to get a lot of use, really happy with that. And this was a surprise one for me, I really en enjoyed this one here, and uh, although obviously it's not something you're really going to use over and over again. It was a lot of fun just seeing how that worked. And again, a very simple fix, just a broken thing. Well, not even broken, it was just dented in here causing friction. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed fixing it. And uh, yeah, if you like stuff like this, please check out my other videos because I'm going to be doing a whole a long series of stuff like this, an ongoing one, loads of weird and wonderful things. So uh, again, as you've seen, all of this stuff was done sometimes without any tools and, uh, you know, okay, a soldering iron and that was about it really. Everything else was just fixed very simply. So you can often fix things very cheaply. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.